Hey everyone, and welcome to my Procreate 4 demo for a piece I call Heterochromia. So for this, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more grounded. I've been having to do a lot of work recently that's more um, fantasy and sort of sci-fi and, and sort of over the top in nature. So I wanted to do something that was uh, more grounded, maybe a little fashion oriented. Um, and so that's, that's sort of where this came from. In the middle of working on it, I also wanted to do like a, a blurry background. Um, after I started on this figure that you're seeing um, sketched right now, uh, I sort of wanted to position her right dead center of the frame, uh, something I don't normally do, and uh, I wanted to, to put her standing in some sort of an environment, but um, I wanted it to sort of more imply the type of environment she's in um, instead of having it be really specific. It's about her, not the environment, but I really wanted her context to be applied, I guess is what you could say. So um, here you can see uh, the rough sketch where I'm trying to figure out what she looks like. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about the sketching phase of this. Uh, I looked up some, uh, so some sort of like looks online because it's always good to reference uh, current trends or current fashions or at the very least the the trends and fashions of what you're trying to capture um, My uh, buddy Ryan and I always used to talk about how much we hated uh, Like 90s comic books how whenever characters were out of their super suits um, They were always wearing these outfits that like nobody in their right mind would wear um, Or like their pants were like skin tight because the artists were so used to drawing that type of thing that them sliding into fashion not to mention the fact they probably didn't have the time really to do all that research uh, because they're having to crank the books out um, we just always were like laughing at the fact that you know when Cyclops isn't dressed as Cyclops he, he looks like you wouldn't be caught dead in the outfit that he's in so I think that referencing fashion uh, is super important when you're trying to do any type of contemporary art or art that's supposed to come from a certain era so now that I just went on a huge tangent about collecting reference, uh, reference is good, um, that's the simple version. Uh, so I started uh, collecting various looks and cobbling them together as I was also uh, creating this uh, woman. And um, I made up a couple of things, but uh, for the most part it's like a, a, a jacket that kind of looks like a jacket that's in a, a fashion line or uh, a hoodie that kind of matches, you know, that type of a thing. So I wanted uh, her to just look like there's something going on there. You can't tell what, um, but she's definitely a, pretty focused on something. I had thought about heterochromia not that long ago, uh, maybe like even in the last piece I was working on, and I thought, eh, that'd be really fun to do, especially if I did someone who seemed like they were just fairly normal. I think that when you do something like two different colored eyes on like a really audacious character, it's just like one more thing. It's sort of like that joke of... Uh, the, the, sorry, the commentary around jokes where it's like you don't put a hat on a hat. It's uh, So I thought that it'd be kind of more interesting to do it with somebody who's otherwise normal because most people who have heterochromia are just normal people and then you notice their eyes and it sort of really catches you. So I wanted to do uh, something on the, along those lines. Now here's one of those examples where you can see me completely borking um, one aspect of the drawing. I wanted to... I was, I was trying a couple of new things across the board on this so I wanted to try something with the hairline instead of really stylizing the hairline I wanted to have like all these little jaggies um, you know like it's actually the I don't know like it's a higher level of fidelity to try and capture the way a hairline really is but you can see that it doesn't go very well and then I start putting in all the strands of hair going up I mean I know how to draw hair I draw hair a lot but it's one of those things where you're trying to test something new and it just isn't really working out. Uh, if I really wanted to put in the effort to try and reconcile it further, I probably could have, but I just felt like it was not going, I don't know, it was a train wreck. It was a mess, let's just go with that. And so, you'll see me switch to stylizing it a bit right here, but then um, the hairline didn't really match the big chunky flowy bits of hair that I was doing, so you'll see me come back and change the hairline again to better suit the stylization so I was all over the place on here but I, I do feel that I eventually got it where I needed it to go we already knew what kind of hairstyle she was gonna have from the rough sketch and we knew the implied look of the hair but when it comes down to the specifics after doing the rough sketch sometimes you can get really lost in trying to make it 
uh, work when you're trying to provide more information and that's exactly what happened to me uh, here. As for coloring style, uh, I hadn't made up my mind where I wanted to go. I knew that because I was spending so much time on a clean line, it was probably going to be something with like flats and shadow or something as opposed to it being rendered up. Um, but uh, I didn't know that I was going to go with it being completely flat like it essentially is in the final version. Once I did the big blurry background, it felt more like an animation cell and so I thought it'd be kind of fun to try and capture that look. So eventually when we get to that stage you'll see some of the things I do there. So now here I've gone and I've changed the hairline to more closely resemble the type of stylization that I'm going for and then I'm reinforcing it uh, with the rest of the strands there. And as I've said many times before, I do these types of pieces in little 5 minute, 10 minute, if I'm lucky, 30 minute spurts here and there. So that's why when you're seeing this in time lapse, you see me address the hair and then all of a sudden I'm working on the sleeve and then suddenly the nose gets adjusted and then all of a sudden there's a, like right now the tassel, the, the string from her hood is being put in. And that's because when I keep exiting the drawing and coming back to it later, I am in the mood to do a different section or I forget where I left off or I, when I'm picking up what I'm going to do now it seems more logical to do something different. So you'll see, you see these jump around a lot um, when maybe the, if it was all in one shot it would seem like a more logical pro progression as I go through it. I felt really comfortable about the way I was doing this sort of like mess of hair she has on top. I felt really comfortable about where that went because I had finally felt good about the rest of the hair and since I sort of established a bit of a style with that, I knew exactly where I wanted to take the top of the hair stylistically. Uh, so that's why you're seeing that in some ways just sort of very confidently get plugged in because I had solved it on the bottom part, the part that's actually around her head, and then I was like, oh, well, shit, now I know exactly what to do on the top. Let's just do this. Let's just crank this out. And it was probably about the time I solved that hair, the hair directly on top of her head, and then started to do the hair um, that's piled on top of her head, I felt like I had like something really good here. So yeah, now I just threw in all of the uh, zipper teeth. Um, I just did that by drawing like four of them and then I duplicated them. They, to try and make it a little bit more realistic zipper than what I normally draw, you know, they don't really protrude that much. So it, it allowed me to do a lot of repetition there and it doesn't look that repeaty because you're already anticipating that a um, zipper is going to be really repetitive. So now we're just throwing in the distant um, part of the jacket. Again, you saw me draw it really long out because I wasn't paying attention. I was just making it the same as the other side. But as I'm checking my reference, you see that jackets, Letterman jackets like this aren't like that. So I pulled it in. Uh, here where I wrote maybe and I had a lot of scribbles around her neck, I was considering putting a ton of gold necklaces, like little thin gold necklaces, just a ton of them around her neck and sort of spilling out from her hoodie because I thought that would kind of be an interesting look and then that would tie in with what I wanted to do with the earring. But I ultimately decided not to going back to that you don't put a hat on a hat type thought. I thought, no, instead I'll do the eye thing. And then I had the idea for the Macross patch, which you'll see come in later. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll do something with like a cool, interesting patch that sort of implies she's part of something more than what it seems. And that's where that came from. So here you're seeing me paint in the background. That was very quick. Let me repeat that. So here it is again, even slower. What this is is since I knew I was already gonna blur it and I didn't wanna get too wrapped up in a bunch of details that were eventually gonna get blurred out, I just painted the entire background with the soft airbrush. Uh, there are a couple things like those lines right there where I thought, well, maybe I'll benefit from doing a more painterly thing because then it looks like the lines that they actually use and then I'll blur it. Maybe that'll be beneficial. Um, but in general, this is me looking at a couple of shots of cities, cities that, are, that had a vibe like what I was going for, kind of like LA and uh, painting it in all really blurry and just sort of implying 
all the shit that's going on back there. Um, she's just sort of standing at like a corner store, little parking lot type area. There's some more shops across the street. You can see more of a downtown in the distance. And then I establish a little bit more of like a cross street in the distance. And then I blur the whole thing even further because I just want you to feel like she's in an area like this, but I don't want it to be um, distracting from her. So you can see there I did a bit of a perspective adjustment. And then we're getting in all those last bits of details, and then I blur the whole thing out even further, and that, and then darken it, and I add noise, and that's what gets it there. I think that's what also helps reinforce the fact that it sort of looks like cell animation, is that that definitely looks like it's painted or printed or something like that, and then she looks like she's on a cell. So now here we're going in with the flat process. As I said, I didn't know if I was gonna um, shade it yet or not, do shadow pass, but I decide not to in the middle of this. Um, there I'm using masks on her hair so that I can start getting some of those strands to feel like they're going up. I use a mask because since the gradient is already soft, if I were to erase and then I wanted to bring paint back in, it would be impossible to match the gradient. So by using a mask, you can pull and pull, you can pull and add take an ad, whatever you want to say, from the um, gradient and it doesn't disrupt it. So I did the, I didn't know if I was going to do shadows or not. So at this point, I'm just flatting the whole thing. Normal process for me to just go ahead and start flatting it. And then uh, I figured I'd make that decision as I got to it. So putting some variation in the skin, I put a little bit more detail into the eyes uh, than I normally would in the flatting process, which is sort of where I'm naturally stumbling into, oh, maybe I don't actually need to do much more. You can also see the shadow underneath her jawline onto her neck. This is where I've definitely made the decision that I'm I'm not going to add shadows anymore because I do that to separate her head from her neck, but I would have done that in a shadow path. So you can see at that stage, my brain has decided I'm not going to actually do any kind of a shadow pass. Originally, I wanted her whole outfit to be in blacks and grays, dark blacks and dark grays, but it just got really dark. I mean, it just makes it look like she's got no definition to her overall. So I decided instead, let's get the white in there. That makes the gold pop a little bit more and makes her whole outfit look a touch more luxurious and then giving her a tank top that sort of this sort of matches that um, lighter blue eye that she got it sort of unifies her entire color scheme and then here I throw in the macross patch at the end is she a fan of macross is she part of macross I don't know that's up for you to figure out and I put a little bit of a drop shadow here so that it, it sort of re-emphasized that idea that she's cell and that she's part of like animation just to try and make it look a little bit like what you might find in a fine art gallery that's selling cell animation there I just adjust the size of the patch and that is uh, basically it um, the, all the layers have been turned on right there at the end, and you can see that's how it turned out. Uh, something I haven't done much in the past, let's go through the steps real quick. So this is the full rough. You can see she was figured out pretty early on. Here's the clean lines over that, and then here's the rough disappeared. Then we've got a little bit of a blur effect. This is how I treated the lines in the final. And then there's the final colors. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And since Procreate 4 has come out, I've heard you guys loud and clear. I know you want more details on some of the new techniques and how things have changed since then. So please leave a comment down below around everything that you would like to see that I've done in some of these videos. And I will do a new video soon where I cover it all. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.